Today's episode spans the first three days of May 1994. Thousands of Tutsis who took refuge in different areas continue to be attacked despite efforts to defend themselves. Tutsis on Karama Hill fought off attacks from 18th April until 1st May when they were faced with a vicious attack from Inerahamwe, police, and gendarme that lasted for four hours. Elsewhere, Tutsis were taken refuge at the Hotel de Mille Collines, paying hotel manager Paul Savagina to stay there were constantly under threat from the genocidal government's attempts to massacre them. May 1st, 1994. Massacres perpetrated against the Tutsi in the former Jisenyi and Butare prefectures. Massacres of Tutsis at Karama Hill, Nyanza. Karama Hill was located in Karama sector, Nyazu commune in the former Butare prefecture and bordered with two cells, Kanjima and Karuyumbu, currently in Nyanza district, Nyazu sector, Chotamakara cell. On April 18th, 1994, while at night patrol, Tutsis realized that residents of Kanjima cell in Karama sector had left for Gatonde sector and those in Karuyumbu cell had gone to Jisasa and Rienzi sectors. It was like betraying them and planning to attack Karama because it was inhabited by a large number of Tutsis. There were also other Tutsis who had taken refuge there from different parts of the country and those who had joined their families. When Tutsis who had gone for a night patrol returned home, they found that their families had fled to Karama Hill, hence they decided to join them there because of fear. Before fleeing, a series of meetings in which the killings were prepared took place in Nyazo and Mijina communes in Nyamuri. In addition, Tutsis fled because before April 18, 1994, their houses were burnt and killings had already started in the sectors bordering Karama like Katonde and Jisasa. On April 18, 1994, Several Tutsis attempted to flee to Burundi via Chividizi, Manda Bridge at Kanyeru River, but when they arrived in Chividizi, they were forced back by Hitima and Efron, the consular of Chividizi sector, along with Inherahamge militia after seizing their belongings. On April 19th, 20th, and 21st, 1994, many Tutsis continued to flee from all the 13 sectors of Nyazo commune, but mainly from Karama, Chimvuzi, and Gatonde sectors. Others were fleeing from Muira, Lusatira, Ruhasha, Marava, and Nyebisindu communes of Utari prefectures, Chigoma, and Nongo communes of Jitarama prefecture, among others. During that time, women, children, and elderly people were gathered in houses of Tutsis at the lower slopes of Karama Hill. But the houses were not enough to accommodate all women, children, and the elderly people. On April 20th, 1994, a major attack composed of gendarmes armed with guns, grenades, and other military equipment attacked from Nyanza. They were led by Hatejekima and Philippe, alias Biguma, who was the deputy commander of the gendarmerie. In addition, the attackers were using the Hatsu car that they confiscated after killing the owner, Rutaisire, in Nyanza. The attacks also included Inerahamg from Karama and Gatonde armed with traditional weapons. However, Tutsis repelled them before reaching the Karama Hill. While defending themselves using stones and bows, Tutsis killed an Inherame member called Karemena Fiston from Karama, injured others, and set ablaze one of their cars. However, the killers went back to reorganize and attacked again in the afternoon. They came armed with fire and traditional weapons and killed three Tutsis, namely Wichinga Maurice, Gahama Nyogistin, and Hachirutimana and injured one Uranjirgwe Mab, who succumbed to wounds the next day. From 21st to 23rd April 1994, attacks of Inerahamge and civilians with traditional weapons continued to be raided. Nevertheless, Tutsis also continued to defend themselves and obstructed the killers from reaching Karama Hill. On April 24th, 1994, there were no attacks at Karama, but Tutsis were taken refuge at Karama Hill, did a brave act and rescued other Tutsis, who are being attacked at Rugueza Menu Hill. That was a 20 minutes walkable distance from Karama. Unfortunately, upon their arrival, several Tutsis had already lost their lives. However, they joined efforts with the Tutsis who were still fighting and managed to repel the killers and rescued many Tutsis, including some who were injured and took them to Karama Hill. From the 25th April 1994, 
Tutsis resisted and continued to repulse the killers, made of Nhirame and civilians, because they were only using traditional weapons. On April 30th, 1994, a fierce attack took place and claimed the lives of 12 Tutsis, but Tutsis also were still resistant and they killed Muganza Joseph, the judicial police officer, Opeji, of Nyazo commune and son of Nzara Mbatanaz, the former mayor of Nyazo commune and MRND president in Nyazo. The attacks were led by Ndahima and Mathieu, who later became the mayor of Nyazo, replacing Nyagasaza Narcisse, who was killed on April 23, 1994, for shielding Tutsis. Mathieu Ndahimana mobilized police officers and gendarmes from Nyazo commune who took part in the attacks against the Tutsis. Also, they were joined by former police commander Mnyane Zaviateur, Djerevatkwari Godfrey, Gatera Adalbert, a former police officer and councillor of Bugari sector, and Muganza Joseph, the judicial police officer of the commune killed by resistant Tutsis. Burundian refugees from Goma camp in Bugari sector also gave hand in the massacres of Tutsis. On May 1, 1994, Tutsis were surrounded by a violent attack that was aiming to exterminate all of them. All the ways to Karama Hill had been blocked to prevent Tutsis from escaping. They tried to resist but were defeated by the armed killers. Thus, the latter ascended the hill and started firing, throwing grenades, and using traditional weapons, and those who tried to flee were killed at the foot of the hill. Their silence killed for more than four hours and only stopped when it started raining. The latter took the victim's cows and other livestock, looted various items, and took off clothes from the corpses. Tutsis were killed by many gendarmes from Nyavisin du Sous Prefecture, led by Hatayekima Ana Philippe alias Biguma, who was the chief warrant officer and deputy commander of the gendarmerie. In particular, on April 23, 1994, he captured the mayor of Nyazo commune, Nyagasaza Narcisse, trying to flee to Burundi and killed him in Nyanza. Hatayekima Ana Philippe fled to France. He was later arrested and is currently under investigation in France. Other attackers included Ndahima Ana Mathieu, who replaced Narcisse as the mayor of Nyazo commune. Before, Ndahima Ana Mathieu was the director of Nyamure Health Center. He collaborated with Munyane Zaviateur, a former police commander in Nyazo commune. Jirabatkware Godfrey, a former police officer currently serving his sentence in Nyanza prison. Gatera Adalbert, a former councillor of Bugari sector. Bizimana Nikodem, councillor of Nyazo sector. Jendahimana, councillor of Jisasa. Zaramba Atanaz, former mayor of Nyazo commune. There are also several Nerhamge and Burundian refugees who lived in Goma camp in Bugari sector who took part in the attacks. Some of the Nerhamge included Tukwajira Mungu Zake, a teacher at Nyamuri Primary School, Erikane, who was a teacher at Jisasa Primary School, and Sinzing Hayoso Sten, Ruyenzi resident. Later on, April 4, 1994, attackers composed of gendarmes, police officers, and Ineramge came back to the site and killed several survivors with guns and traditional weapons. A few who survived that deadly attack escaped to the nearby forests and bushes. Generally, more than 30,000 Tutsis were killed at Karama Hill and their bodies were left scattered around because there were too many to be buried. Others were thrown in the trenches. Massacres of Tutsis at Nyundo Catholic Church and its surroundings, Rubavu. From 1990 to April 1994, Tutsis in Nyundo were under threat. Some were arrested and imprisoned on accusations of being accomplices of Ingo In 1991, there started persecutions of Tutsis in former Kanama commune. They took refuge at Petit Seminaire de Nyundo and at the Brothers Center, formerly known as Frères des Instructions Chrétiennes. In 1992, the number of refugees kept increasing. Bishop of Nyundo Diocese, Karibushi Wenceslas, received many Tutsis from the Bigogwe clan and accommodated them for three years because he stayed with them until 1994. In the meantime, some of their houses were set ablaze. Others were demolished and their cows were slaughtered. When they returned to their homes, the Bishop Karibushi helped them in the rebuilding process. On April 7, 1994, when the genocide against the Tutsi had started, those who had taken refuge at Petit Seminaire de Nyundo were killed at the same day. Survivors joined others at the diocese on April 8th and spent the entire day fighting with Nherahamge with only stones and pieces of tiles. On the morning of April 9th, 1994, the prefect of Giseni Prefecture came at Nyundo and took foreign priests from the Nyundo diocese. Therefore, Colonel Saint-Yum Van Atoll came and asked the Tutsis. 
Are you angry that you want to fight? Father Fabian replied, What can we use to fight, sir? Do you see any weapons with us? Immediately, attackers including soldiers and gendarmes with guns, grenades and traditional weapons entered the church and started killing Tutsis who were in the church and Tutsi priests including Father Alois Nzaramba, Father Ferdinand Karichezi, Father Calix de Kalisa, Father Adrien Zanana, Father Edouard Gakwandi and Father Clément Kanyabusozo. They also killed sisters Juliana, sister Giovanni, sister Vianney, sister Leticia, sister Candida and others. Survivors of the attack stayed within the area since they could not find a safe place to go to. On May 1st, 1994, Tutsis were killed. Despite their hope to survive, as the International Committee of the Red Cross, ICRC, had started negotiations to take them to Goma in Zaire. Prior to the massacres that took place on May 1st, 1994, Ineram were called Tutsis who were hiding to come from the bushes, houses, and other hiding places and join others at Nyundo, assuring them of protection. Several of them moved to Nyundo diocese with other Tutsis from Chivumu in Inyamyumba, among other places. Contrary, they were killed. On April 27, 1994, ICRC brought foodstuff in the area and all those who had remained in hiding places came out to get food as they thought the massacres had ended. Some of the refugees were educated and whenever they attempted to give explanation to the ICRC staff in foreign languages about their grief, the prefet would immediately take the floor and shut them up. On May 1, 1994, at around 4 p.m., the attacks of Inerhamne from Nyabihu, Chibirira, including the so-called Abanyachiganda, came in two full Daihatsu cars belonging to Nyabihu Tea Factory. There were also local Inerhamne militias from Muira, Mahoko, Rubumbati, among other places. The killings were initiated in a bid to impede the ICRC's plan to take them to Congo before they would be killed. The first person who got killed that evening was Serushana, a man from the Bagogwe clan who was popularly known as Konseye. He was also the head of those refugees. About 1,000 Tutsis were killed that night. Only young people who ran to the bushes around the church survived. Other survivors were those left under the dead bodies in the church. They managed to come out at night because all the murderers and gendarmes had already left the site. The massacres of Tutsis at Nyundo Diocese was carried out by soldiers from Jisenyi and gendarmes who lived in Nyundo since 1991. Ineramge and Imuza Mugambi of CDR. Killers threw grenades in the church and used other traditional weapons. The prominent killers at Nyundo Diocese. Kano Senjumba Anatol, the interim prefect of Jisenyi Prefecture. Major Viganiro. Command of Gendarme in Gisenyi, Lieutenant Wizumuremi Jean Berkimas, alias Rutuku, Second Lieutenant Dusaweyezu Estache, Marius, the Mayor of Kanama Commune, Mundabanyaga Fidel, a medical assistant, Kabirgi Stanislas, Councillor of Muira Sector, Mozambique Mark, former Mayor of Ruavu Commune, Father Nuri Edouard, alias Simba, and many others. May 2nd, 1994. Massacres perpetrated against the Tutsi in Kigali City. Attempted assassination of Tutsi refugees at Hotel de Mille Collines in Kigali. On May 2, 1994, the genocidal government planned to massacre Tutsis who had taken refuge at Hotel de Mille Collines in Kigali. As the genocide was underway, some refugees, mainly Tutsis, took refuge at the Hotel de Mille Collines where they paid Paul de Savagina so that he would allow them to stay. On May 2, 1994, the genocidal government attempted to kill them. But the French press and the intervention of Dr. Bernard Kouchner, a former French minister, prevented the massacres by disseminating the news in France. At the same time, the French civil society denounced these massacres and demanded President Mitterrand to advise the Rwandan genocidal government not to kill the refugees fearing the international reaction. Vincent Hugues, journalist of L'Express newspaper, wrote on June 2, 1994, that on May 2, 1994, Bruno Dallet, the in charge of Africa at the French presidency, told General Gustave Zimungu, the Rwandan chief of staff, that if they kill the refugees at Hotel de Mille Coulines, would create a bad image at the international scene, and consequently, France would hardly continue to support Rwanda. Another newspaper, Billet d'Afrique, published by the NGO Survie in France, confirmed this information in their 31st magazine, published in February 1996. 
Also, Liberation newspaper on May 25, 1994, wrote that the genocidal government had deployed its agents at Hotel de Mille Colline to monitor refugees. The killers who frequently came to Hotel de Mille Colline included Father Wenceslas Munyeshaka, who also greatly participated in the massacres of Tutsis at Saint Famille Church, located a short distance from Hotel de Mille Colline. Father Wenceslas Munyeshaka's participation in the massacres of Tutsis at Saint Famille Church and its surroundings. Several witnesses confirm that on various dates between April 8th and the first week of July 1994, Wenceslas Munyeshaka took part in meetings held at Saint Famille Parish, Saint Paul Church, and at Tsela in Kigali to organize the massacres and kidnappings of Tutsi civilians. In those meetings, Munyeshaka was along with Colonel Tarsis Renzaho, Odette Nirabajenzi, Angeline Mukandutie, Lieutenant Colonel Laurent Munyakazi, other soldiers and Inerame militias. Subsequently, the Tutsis were taken refuge in the Saint Famille Parish, Saint Paul Pastor Santa, and Sela in Kigali were massacred. According to survivors of Saint Famille massacres on April 13, 1994, when Sislas Mnyeshaka himself shot dead a young Tutsi on the premises of Saint Famille Parish. He also killed two young Tutsis, aged 18 and 20 respectively. On that same day, Munyeshaka also shot a 22-year-old Tutsi girl. Furthermore, on June 17, 1994, at St. Famille Parish, Munyeshaka incited Inerami to kill a Tutsi girl named Hasinat Rugwangwa, also known as Bebe. Victims of rape testified that on April 21, 1994, when Sislas Munyeshaka encouraged an Inherame member to rape a young Tutsi who had taken refuge at St. Famille Parish. At the end of June 1994, Munyeshaka raped a young girl at St. Famille Parish. The victim herself testified this. Throughout the genocide, when Sislas Munyeshaka continually raped girls whom he said he was shielding in his room. On April 24, 1994, at St. Paul Pastoral Center in Kigali, when Sislas Munyeshaka helped Inherame militia, including Leonard Bagabo to kidnap seven young Tutsis that included Emmanuel Rukundo, journalist, engineer Aristarch Batsinduka, and Mazimaka, a student, and they were well aware that these people were to be killed. On June 14, 1994, when Sislas Munyeshaka supported soldiers in the search and identification of Tutsis who had taken refuge at St. Paul Pastoral Center in Kigali, knowing they were on the list of those to be killed. In addition, 60 Tutsis who had been identified by Wenceslas Munyeshaka were kidnapped by the killers and massacred. They included Antoine Marie, Zakari Gasarabgi, Arias Gassindi, Charles Rutsitsi, Emmanuel Nyerguaya, Diogène Rubaduka, Tkwa Hasewajura, and André Kamea. On August 2, 1994, Wenceslas Munyeshaka with 28 other Rwandan priests signed in Goma a document addressed to Pope John Paul II justifying and denying the genocide committed against the Tutsis. They were putting responsibility for the killings on the RPF, thus exonerating the real perpetrators of the genocide. This document shocked the international opinion. France has always refused to try Wenceslas Munyeshaka. There is ample evidence that has shown for over 20 years that France has been reluctant to try Father Wenceslas Mnyeshaka for the crimes he committed in Rwanda. Indeed, it was on July 25, 1995, when the investigating judge of Privas in France started the process of information gathering for the charges against Mnyeshaka of genocide, crimes against humanity, and participation in a formed group or an agreement established with a view to the preparation of these crimes on the basis of the principles of universal jurisdiction provided for in the New York Convention of 1984 against torture. Following the multiple signs of refusal to try Wenceslas Mnyesheka, the European Court of Human Rights, ECHR, condemned France for non-respect of the fair trial, in particular the non-respect of reasonable time, to try a case. On June 21, 2007, the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, ICTR, issued arrest warrants against Wenceslas Mnyeshaka. On 20th November 2007, the ICTR stopped its interest in investigating Mnyeshaka on the request of France under unidentified legitimate reasons. France took the responsibility to investigate charges against Mnyeshaka. Several rogatory commissions took place in Rwanda to gather information on charges against Mnyeshaka, and nearly 70 witnesses were heard 
and evidence were gathered to inform the investigation into charges against Mnyeshaka. It is incomprehensible that the Paris Prosecutor's Office deemed the gathered evidence unfounded, whereas the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, ICTR, had considered them serious and justifying the indictment of Wenceslas Mnyeshaka. The French prosecution requested that Wenceslas Mnyeshaka should not be returned to the assizes and this was respected by the investigating judges. However, overwhelming testimonies from survivors of the genocide and even testimonies by genocidaires are unanimous to confirm that Wenceslas Mnyeshaka himself committed or helped to commit mass killings and rapes of Tutsi refugees at St. Famille Church and St. Paul. These facts were confirmed by Rwandan justice, which convicted Wenceslas Mnyeshaka and sentenced him in absentia to life imprisonment in the same trial with late General Laurent Munyakazi. Therefore, the position of French justice raises many questions as to the importance it attaches to the genocide committed against the Tutsis. A dismissal for a person like Wenceslas Mnyeshaka, whose role in the genocide was demonstrated during general rogatory letters, can only confirm that France does not want to judge the architects of the genocide. This attitude can be explained, moreover, by the fact that the government of François Mitterrand helped and participated in the planning and execution of the genocide against the Tutsi between October 1, 1990 and July 1994. May 3, 1994. Massacres perpetrated against the Tutsi in the former Changugu and Butare prefectures. Massacres of Tutsis at Jihundgwe Adeper Church in Rusizi. The Jihundgwe Adeper Church is currently built in Rusizi district, Jihundgwe sector, which is the origin of the Adeper Church in Rwanda. When the genocide started on April 7, 1994, several Tutsis from former Chimbogo commune in Yakanyinya, Mutimasi, Murangi, Uganda, and a few from Kamembe took refuge at Adeper Jihundgwe and at Group Scholar Jihundgwe. They started to flee to Jihundwe on April 14, 1994, around 3 p.m. However, church authorities had initially denied them entry in the church, but late at night, they were allowed to enter. The next day, the Inerame came and killed one Tutsi before leaving. Then, Tutsis realized that the situation was becoming dire. After learning that Tutsis had taken refuge in Adeper Jihundwe and Group Scolar Jihundwe, Prefet Wagambichi Emmanuel of Changugu came and asked them to go to Kamaramaka Stadium, pledging to protect them. But they refused because they knew his cruelty. On May 3, 1994, around 10 a.m., three students, originating from the war zone area, called upon soldiers and gendarmes. Upon their arrival, they gathered Tutsis who had taken refuge there and killed them using guns and grenades. Those who survived went to hide in the surroundings of the stadium and in other places. The group of killers at the site was coordinated by Prefet Bagambichi Emmanuel, Sous-Prefet Theodore Munyangave, François Zeimana, Lieutenant Samuel Imani Shimge, Christophe Nyangui, Elise Bisengimana, Pastor Sanzurgui Mo Joseph and his son Sanzurgui Mo Jean, Thompson Mobiriji, Massacres of Tutsis at Bambiro in Nyanza. Bambiro is in the former Butare Prefecture, Muira Commune, Matara Sector, Rugunga Cell, currently in Nyanza District, Chibiti Sector, Cheru Cell, Rutete Village. From April 7, 1994, when the genocide against the Tutsi started, killings did not start straight away in Bambiro. They first took time to sensitize and mobilize people to kill. The genocide perpetrated against the Tutsi started in that area on April 19, 1994, after the speech of Cindy Kubgabo in Butare, where he said that people were acting as if the killings did not concern them. Killers started hunting Tutsis down. They killed them, set their houses on fire, destroyed others, and looted Tutsis' belongings. Tutsis immediately started to run away, hiding and fleeing because they had been abandoned by their neighbors. The hunt for the Tutsis continued, but killers reassured them that women and children, especially girls, would not be killed and that they would be protected in Bambiro. As a result, those who were hiding went to Bambiro and some of the boys were dressed like girls to confuse the killers about their gender. They fled to Bambiro hoping that they would be protected and all of them were there by May 1, 1994. Their numbers increased to more than 454 women and children. During those days at Bambiro, the killers would come, pick those they wanted and go torture, rape and kill them afterwards.
they had realized that their plan to gather women and children at Bambiro succeeded and that they had to plot the assassination on May 3rd. On May 3rd, 1994, the killers came with traditional weapons of all kinds, wearing banana leaves, whistling, and surrounded Bambiro and started to kill Tutsis. They first harassed the parents, stripped their clothes off, raped them, tortured them, while saying words like, your arrogance, your insolence, and your pride. After that, they chopped them and threw them in toilets, while some of them were still alive. They killed Tutsis after organizing them by age categories. Children, teenagers, adult girls, adult women, and elderly women. Tutsis were killed the entire day, but before that, they first killed Denise Aramba, an old man, who had been left by the killer saying he will serve as an example of how a Tutsi looked like after exterminating all other Tutsis. They killed him and threw his body in the toilet, saying that he will cure them the curse of shedding blood of Tutsi women and children. Denis Nzaramba was the only man killed there. When Tutsis saw Ineramge wearing banana leaves, armed with traditional weapons and whistling, they were very terrified and some tried to escape, but killers ran after them, killed some and brought others back. Those who were weak stayed there and only believed that prayer would save them. Hence, they were killed and silently died as they were being tortured. Killers at the site included Safari Jean Bosco, former schools inspector in Nyazo commune and son of a prominent businessman called Mubiri Jatanaz who had introduced MDR in the area and later became MDR power supporter. He always attended Vandora's trainings in Ruhuha on how they would commit the genocide. Safari was arrested and served his sentence but he fled to Malawi after his release to join his relatives. Kajenza Jane Pomsen, who was also a prominent businessman, he led several attacks. Ruduri Felicien, another businessman who played a key role in the massacres. Hanyurim Fura Antoine was the nephew of Sindikubgawa Theodor and was a cleaner at Nyamiaga court. He took part in all the attacks, especially that of Muira. Mirenzo and his sons, Burundian refugees, were very active in the killings. Ndorichima Afrodis, the former brigadier of Nihazo commune. Nabuye Sylvain was a teacher at Serai. He had just completed school and would come to choose girls that he wanted to rep and also participated in Bandora's training at Ruhuha in Bujesera. Nomani Inerahamge from Bujesera. Gashushure Ernest, a teacher who used loudspeaker lying to Tutsis that peace was restored and that they should come out of hiding. Rugizangoga, Banzinjiti Antoine and many others. There was also a young boy called Montfort, grandson of Rutare, who raped children of his age and killed them after. He was imprisoned and later released as he was a minor aged 10 when he committed the crimes. Thank you for listening to another episode of Kwibuka Podcast. As always, make sure you leave us a review, sharing what you like about the podcast, and share with others who would be interested in listening.